Welcome, everybody. Um, it's so good to see you all. Ooh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that little bing noise. So we don't need to hear that because, of course, we're going to be getting some people over the next five to 10 minutes. <clears throat> but I'm Leslie Nips, and welcome to this, this gathering, uh, this workshop, an hour and a half to get to know uh, a few people associated with the Western Constellations Intensive and uh, have some constellation experiences today with each other uh, and just get to have a little bit of yummy time with some extremely high quality people, if I may say so myself. Um, so uh, I hope you have a lovely time. Uh, it is being recorded um, for the people who can't make it today. So keep that in mind in terms of your participation. Um, and also, uh, you never know how many people are going to come to these things, right? Will we have 30 people? Will we have 100 people? Uh, and so uh, we're going to keep this a little bit loose. Uh, but if you do have a question or a comment, there will be specific moments for that. Uh, and in general, if you could use the little digital hand rather than unmuting yourself, and uh, you know, uh, speaking up that way, just so we can help manage the group a little bit. Uh, if you don't know where that is, the bottom of your screen, reactions, if you click on that, you will notice the place where it says raise hand, and that's what you can do. Um, uh, the other things that are here available to us, the main thing, upper right-hand corner view, you have control over view and whether you would like to see us as a gallery or you would like to see the speaker as the largest thing on your screen, you have control over that. Bottom left-hand corner muting and bottom, if you need to stop your video, some of you may find yourself in a position where you need to do that. Uh, uh, you can use that as well. For right now, it's just nice. I'm not gonna read these out loud, it would be absurd, um, but put in your name and where you're calling in from. We are systemic people and it tends, you know, Zoom is a no man's land, right? It's kind of a, where are we? We're together in this virtual space, but it gives us a chance to feel where we are around the world. And I know we are a uh, international group. So uh, put in your name, where you're calling in from, and then read other people's and just, just feel where this group is. I'm too busy talking, I can't top, type, so I'll just say I am in the Southwest of the United States of America. Uh, and we've got Italy, Israel, United States, Canada, Spain, ah, I love it, it's so wonderful. This is the great grace of Zoom, right? Zoom can be problematic, but it's also this enormous gift. Uh, so it's really nice to have you all. Keep reading those as they show up. Um, we are here to uh, share some wisdom from the faculty of the Western Constellations Intensive. It's our seventh year. Uh, we've moved from Northern California to New Mexico, United States, um, because I moved. Uh, and we are going to be welcoming Susie Tucker and Dragos Reedy, all the way from Romania, uh, Christy Alexis. Uh, Christy Reichenbach is our uh, uh, registrar. She's local. Uh, and our theme for this year that feels really connected to our moment is opening a doorway, old wisdom for the new day. Yeah. Um, a lot of things are being picked up in a new way after the last two years, yeah? And so we're having to let go of things that maybe never did work, but definitely didn't work over the last couple of years. Jobs that were lost, health that changed, even loved ones who died, yeah? Um, and we're having to face forward as new opportunities arise, uh, well aware of the losses and the endings of the last couple of years. And yet as Constellations teaches us, 
we are in touch with something that endures through all of this and which we're choosing to call wisdom. Yeah, something that has some continuity to it. So that's our theme and uh, invite you to reflect on that theme with us today. Uh, but at this time, I want us to start to turn it over to the faculty and our staff uh, and ask them to introduce themselves a little bit. Some of you may know some of these people very, very, very well, and some of them may be brand new to you. So we want them to introduce themselves to you, say a bit about you know, what's their background in constellations, what are their interests, and then um, one of the things that the faculty do is uh, offer a workshop during the course of the intensive. They're gonna talk about their workshop and what about that is interesting to them. So I'm gonna invite you to do a little listening for a little bit and receiving some wisdom from our faculty members and the gifts of their experience. Uh, and Susie, if I may start with you, please. Um, share of yourself with the group. Sure. <clears throat> I don't know about wisdom, Leslie, but I've got depth of experience for sure. Um, I'm Susie Tucker, one R, by the way, my, my finger shook and I put two R's on my name. Um, so what can I tell you? You know, when I introduce myself, I kind of, you, you introduce yourself slightly differently every time because something different is in the forefront of your mind. Um, and I would say that I, it, today I'm going to introduce myself this way. I met Bert Hellinger in 1998, and I, uh, he is the assembler of family constellations. I know that his name is not known to everybody, um, which is funny from the inside. But, uh, and we met really through books. We met through writing. We met through literature. We met through creativity. We met through art, we met through poetry, and my relationship with him, my friendship with him, actually, um, was really on that basis. We both love the world of, um, of uh, theater and music, and for me, constellation and art are um, part and parcel of one another. And my interest from the beginning, and, you know, it, the essence of it, even if the form changes, is around reclaiming creativity, reclaiming generativity, reclaiming optimism, which we often lose um, sometimes immediately uh, upon birth because we are born into such uh, vulnerable circumstances and sometimes along the way because we um, meet a crossroads that we can't quite fathom and that we're ill-prepared for. And so a lot of my work, a lot of my orientation is around reclaiming what is there. Uh, the beauty for me in Constellation is the unfolding of the map behind us though, so that we can unfold the map in front of us and not live in the crease. Um, so Bert Hellinger was an important teacher to me. He was not my only teacher. I always think of my first, I, when I think of teachers, I think of Mrs. Kuhn in fifth grade, who taught me in a very religious school and wore very, very short skirts and caught me in the uh, hallway smoking and didn't turn me in. And uh, she, in who she was, taught me something new and beautiful about um, the world and belonging. And then the second teacher I think of is my modern dance teacher, who was a uh, lead dancer from Martha Graham, and who literally taught me to be in my body and that it was an okay place to be, and that you could work very hard on small interstitial steps and then put them together and be carried across the floor. I think that's related to constellations, small interstitial steps that feel effortful for a while and then they carry you. So Bertrand Ross. And then Bert Hellinger, I would say was um, 
So forgive me, I do know some of you well, so some of you have heard this line. Um, Bert Hellinger was, I would say I was in search of my father for a very long time. And uh, I met him many times throughout my life as one does. And Bert was the last of my father figures because he gently and powerfully turned me to my actual father. And so my relationship with Bert got to continue well past most relationships with men because my father was there and Bert was my teacher. Um, I facilitate, I teach, I write. They're all the same thing to me. Um, they're all around moving past the parameters we were born into, into something emergent and unknown. I find ease in this, reciprocity in this, life in this. My workshop at this conference is a workshop that I never want to do. It's not something I would pick. I would pick something fabulous and complicated. And what comes to me is the first constellation, which is the constellation that starts in the womb and the knowledge that we have upon birth about our mother, about our surroundings, about our backgrounds, and that we spend our lives trying to come to terms with. So my workshop will be around the first constellation, what we learn in the womb, and then what we reclaim um, sort of from the ancestry that was lost in the moment of our parents and us. So as I say, it's not one I would choose in a way, and yet it to me is the imprint of our lives. And that there, um, if I live within the parameters of that, then my life will repeat and repeat and repeat. And to move out of the parameters of that, I revisit, I return, I return as an adult, and again, I reclaim. So that's a little about me. I have to say I'm so thrilled to work with Leslie Nips again. Um, it's a great pleasure and an honor, and it's a great pleasure and an honor to meet Dragos and to get to know him just a little bit. I look forward to doing that, and I think we make a hell of a team. And Christina um, provides scaffolding and um, the beauty of the person who actually allows us to show up. So thank you, Christina. I look forward to meeting some of you and I look forward to seeing some of you again. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Susie. And I'll just acknowledge the um, difficulty that our last registrar was Christina. But our registrar this year is Christy. So we'll just, <laughs> we'll just, that's bound to cause some confusion. Um, so thank you for that. Um, and as we're going along, again, I do invite people. Um, we may not call on you immediately, but if you want to raise your little digital hand uh, in response, um, in addition to introducing themselves, um, our speakers are wanting to offer some some teaching, a little bit of insight, their perspective on things, and that may kick up stuff for you. So uh, feel free to raise your little digital hands if, if something does come up for you and we'll, we will get to you. But for now, Dragos, could you introduce yourself in your workshop? In your workshop? Yes, um, good morning to you all. Even if you are in different time zones, I will give you this good morning because good morning is an invitation to a new beginning. And I'm a beginning beginner. I'm 
it's my fresh new start uh, with the Western Constellation this year, thanks to uh, to Leslie. Um, and I, I would like to uh, to take the opportunity to thank her and also to thank Susie because they're welcoming in in their team. Uh, they have uh, some time working together, and I'm just uh, the new kid on the block, sort of speaking. Um, <clears throat> I'm doing this work for a little bit. Uh, I met the work in 2009, and it was interesting because um, I went to Family Constellation without knowing that I'm going to Family Constellation. I got a present for my birthday. My uh, my actual wife uh, told me I have a surprise for you, so uh, don't book your weekend. And I was thinking we're going on vacation somewhere, sailing or in the mountains. And then she said, oh, no, you don't need to pack anything else beside yourself because you have everything you need in there. And I didn't understand anything about what she was telling me. But once I landed in the Family Constellation workshop, it really struck me. And it struck me because I had... Um, I had an enlightenment, sort of speaking. I got an answer to a lifelong question, an existential question that I was, you know, dragging uh, along with me. And that question was, what am I supposed to do in this life? What's my purpose? What do I have to do? And I've done a lot of things until that point. So for me, it was the answer uh, because I knew this is my path and this is my calling to, to pursue Family Constellation. And that's what I'm doing uh, since um so 2009 then 2010 in february i met uh, bert hellinger he came to romania with uh, his wife and i had a chance to uh to have a piece of work with him to to have a constellation with him and then i followed uh, some trainings with barbara morgan which some of you might know uh, uh, the editor of the, the knowing field uh and then uh, also i had a training with the utah ten Herkel, uh which ones was also one of the first um, um, students of Birch. Actually, she was translating his books and following him all over the world until she uh, she dropped everything and she started uh, doing also the work. And actually, Utah is the initiator of the international um, um, journal, systemic journal. It was called the Systemic Bulletin, and she had three, uh, three issues. After that, she handed over to Barbara Stone, I guess, and Barbara uh, Morgan. And after that, uh, I pursued my um, my journey. Um, I met Jan Jakobstam and the Bert Hellinger Institute from the Netherlands, uh, where I I did a training uh, in organizational constellation. For me, constellation is not um, a, only a tool or a, a therapeutical method. It's more um, a philosophy uh, of life, a life philosophy. And I felt that in this multi-layered environment, uh, organizations, I could found, find some other interesting dynamics uh, that I could look at and, you know, uh, gather some some teachings. From that place, I went to do uh, working with horses. And I did also training in doing constellation with horses. And I've been completely fascinated uh, by how we are connected on a very 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 deep uh, level uh, among us but also among with other uh, beings and the horses have this particularity they're inviting you to be part of their herd the horse does not know uh, the paradigm of i am the horses are only in the we are and once you step into the this space of the horse you are invited to be part of that and until you are fully tuned and the tune with with the the horse's pace then he will give signals uh to include you so it's a very interesting uh, place i met also uh sophie hellinger i did a training with her in 2013 i guess um on cosmic power uh working with cosmic power and actually this is a concept that uh Bert had included in his uh, late work in his last uh, years and it's the connection of what he was talking about that uh, connection with the spirit mind the, the universal energy um, the place where you're not attached to anything but everything is possible the so-called void 
so that's a bit my uh, my experience uh, uh, with the with the work. I've been offering uh, workshops since 2011 uh, all around uh, Romania on different uh, teams, either on organizational or family or working uh, with horses. Um, and since 2016, uh, I'm offering also trainings um, in Romania. And since last year, I'm doing also uh, international trainings. So here I am. Um, I'm also the father of three. Um, and it's uh, if some of you might know, it's very challenging. Uh, and mines are 33, 22, and 10. So I have the full range. I'm not get I didn't, don't have the time to get bored and I have to admit that they're my 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 best teachers um, and they're helping me a lot to see uh, this work uh, with very different eyes from a very different uh, perspective uh, maybe one more thing to mention uh, I met uh, Leslie in 2014 or 15 I guess I can't remember exactly in in uh, the intensive in Germany uh, where it was a, an extraordinary connection between people who uh, were attending that place. It was an extraordinary sharing. And I I, I kept connected with her in a, in a way, and I really appreciate the fact that, you know, she has invited me for this uh, intensive. Um, my workshop is about uh, working with split parts. Um, and you might probably uh, know uh, how that is or where it's coming from. It's coming from uh, Franz Rupert's uh, work. And this is where I actually really uh, met this kind of um, a way of working and the depth he was taking this work. And the working with split parts, it's a workshop that emerged after a series of observations and, and constellations that I've led during the years, where I've seen that, you know, we are traveling on our journey. And when we are encountering uh, some difficult moments, uh, we can call them, you know, traumatic moments So in some cases, but sometimes it's not, they're not necessarily traumatic moments, just difficult moments parts of us are uh, are detaching we are leaving them behind or we're leaving these parts of uh, ourselves trapped uh, in a place uh, unconsciously uh, of course and especially when we had a traumatic event uh, our self is splitting in three main parts that's the uh, the survivor who takes the lead and helps us to continue our life uh, there's the healthy part, part who does not have the um, resources to emerge and have a, a normal life. And there's the traumatized part who is captive in a frozen place in a, in a time loop where the event is continuing to, uh, um, to happen all over again. And by looking from this perspective, I have noticed that when you're stepping in a place of reconciliation with yourself or with the world or when you're looking for a place of healing sometimes we are deprived of some um, resources and one of the resources it, it's that traumatized part or that wounded part uh, which really needs to be seen and reintegrated and basically this is uh, uh, what the, this workshop is doing is presenting you know the way to look at these parts and the way how to to bring them back and to reconcile them we are such a complex uh, beings we're so many layers uh, and and sometimes we're losing those some parts of us uh, along our uh, our journey so this is uh, in a few words uh, uh, the theme of my workshop i will be glad if you have some questions i'll ask them happily thank you thank you so much dragos that's really rich and um, I want to let people know that, um, don't worry, we're not going to be talking heads for the whole time, uh, that in addition to um, hearing us speak for a few minutes here, uh, we're also going to be doing some experiences. Uh, so we will shift gears in a little bit um, to be having an experience with the faculty as well. 
Um, and yes, feel free to raise your little digital hand if you have a question. But at this point, I'd like to turn uh, Christy, uh, who is not gonna be offering a workshop, but she is gonna be in some sense, the face of this event. Uh, and so Christy, if you could uh, introduce yourself, uh, our registrar and local connection. <laughs> Hi, thank you, Leslie. Um, I'm Christy, I live in Santa Fe, New Mexico now. I did move here from Southern California. I have some constellation training and certification, but I, I don't really facilitate. I use it, you know, in my personal life. Um, I work in uh, Albuquerque and Santa Fe with hospitality um, restaurants and hotels, but I also do this as well. I, you know, will help facilitate workshops, uh, plan events, things like that. I'm looking through the notes and I recognize a lot of people who've already signed up and, and gotten, you know, uh, and are, have put in their requests. Um, if there's any questions, if you have dietary concerns, uh, if there's a transportation issue, please reach out to me. Uh, if I can't answer your question right, right away, I will find an answer for you and we'll get you all settled and up to Ghost Ranch. It is possibly one of the most beautiful spots on the planet. And I would encourage anyone who's just thinking about this right now to really look into it, look, look, um, look at the landscape, see the terrain. It is a fascinating place and I, I can't wait to see what constellation work looks like in this environment because it is so spiritually supportive um, and just, it's spectacular. And I, I'm, I'm so excited, I can't wait for this. Thank you so much, Leslie and Susie and Dragos. Um, I, I turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Christy. Um, I'll say a few words about myself. And by the way, if you look closely at Christy's home, she's got a few sort of architectural aspects of, uh, you know, what it looks like here architecturally and what it looks like um, for a lot of the buildings at Ghost Ranch as well. So I'm trying to get this, to, I'm gonna have to pin myself. Spotlight for everyone for just a moment. Um, so I am Leslie Nips, a little bit of self-introduction. Uh, I came to Constellations uh, after a couple of other careers um, and, and I have two different sides to who I am. I mean more than two, but two that are relevant right now. I started out life in physics and astronomy. So I have a very strong science side. And then I also spent 15 years as an Anglican priest. And so I have the mystical contemplative spiritual side of myself as well. Um, <clears throat> from both contexts, I've always been really interested in systems, uh, in physics, you know, particles, gravity fields, uh, zero point energy, all that stuff has been very interesting to me. Um, and, and of course, in spirituality, the network of relationships that form the universe, non-local consciousness, social intelligence, crowd intelligence, um, what comes through the knowing of the herd, as uh, Dragos referred to it. Um, this is stuff I've always been very interested in. I think compelled a little bit by our culture um, that I, I live in, maybe not the ones you all live in, but the one I live in, which is very individual oriented um, and boils everything down to the personal, my depression, my anxiety, my brilliance, my whatever, right? And in Constellations, what we learn is that we're embedded in such a spectacular set of, of belongings that shape us. And as, as Dragos was saying, um, yes, we have an eye. The eye is very important. Uh, our, our individual self and uh, honoring and having a way to express ourselves as individuals is so very 
precious. And there's kind of no self in the context of the larger network of relationships. And Constellations helps us turn up the gain on that in a way that I find so practical after thinking about it very th theoretically and abstractly. Uh, the first time I was in a constellation, which I totally thought was a hoax, I was watching it and I'm like, ah, I don't believe in any of this. Um, but uh, when I when I represented, which many of you may have had this experience, you started to believe constellations when you first represented, is often when it really hits home. Um, I finally went, oh, the communion of saints isn't just a nice idea. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. And that was really moving for me uh, and, and expanded my sense of what I belong to uh, so extraordinarily. The other part of who I am is I like to run stuff. I admit it. I like running stuff. Um, and I have strong visions for creating um, organizationally healthy teams where brilliant people can come together and do their brilliant individual thing. Um, and we can support each other and have fun doing it and have each other's backs, which is my experience over the years is that participants who come to these intensives um, kind of don't have to worry about the team. They can just relax and have their beautiful experience. And they kind of have fun knowing and seeing that the team is having fun. And that even though we're all quite different and we bring different strengths and different styles and different personalities, um, that we're enjoying that about each other. And then you, the participants, get to enjoy it about yourselves, your uniqueness, your special sauce, what makes you, you. So I love creating this event. I've been doing it for seven years. Clearly, I must enjoy it. Um, and uh, I'm excited uh, to be giving you all this. Uh, I, I, I know most of you are not going to come to the intensive. And that's just fine. That's just fine. Um, you, get, you get the intensive right now. That's what we want to give you is just a little bit of it right now. And then for those of you who think, oh, I'd like more of that, then you might come along for the ride if you're able to. Um, my workshop is um, on wisdom lineages. I took the word specifically from the theme. Uh, again, in my theological background, wisdom is a word that has a lot of weight for me. Uh, in the Greek, wisdom is Sophia. Yeah. And deep in both um, uh, Jewish theology and even a sort of Hellenic Greek theology, and therefore in Christian theology, um, the notion of wisdom isn't just a nice characteristic. Oh, he's wise, she's wise, I'm wise. I would like some wisdom about this, yeah? It's actually a characteristic of the divine. And in, and in particular, if you hear the word Sophia, um, it's a feminine name usually. It's part of the creative feminine force of the divine. Holy wisdom, holy Sophia. Some of you may know that there is a old church, um, now a mosque, now actually a museum in Istanbul called Agia Sophia, holy wisdom. And so what I'm gonna be doing in my workshop is inviting us to connect with our wisdom lineages, um, primarily ancestrally, but not limited to that. Uh, the notion that um, our predecessors have participated in this divine creative force. The idea is that Sophia was there at the very beginning, that without Sophia, the divine could not have created anything. And so wisdom was at the is the creative power, the energizing, organizing power of things. Without it, nothing could have been made. And so this is in our lineages. Now, usually constellations were quite appropriately focusing a lot on our trauma lineages, right? The terrible things that happened to our ancestors that for whatever reason were entangled with and carry. Um, and uh, sometimes it's useful to notice that we also carry other aspects of our lineages. Uh, and 
in particular, I'm going to invite us, and this is new for me. So this is going to be with with uh, Susie. Uh, her first constellation is like ah, this is kind of new for me. This is kind of new for me as well. I'm kind of excited about it. Um, inviting us to feel that divine creative force that even our ancestors have been able to taste and participate in. I do think, as uh, Christy was um, implying, uh, we will also be drawing on the wisdom of the land that divine creative energy and the stark uh, buttes and mesas uh, and, and desert gorgeous landscape. Uh, this is why holy people uh, over the ages have been drawn to deserts to seek wisdom. And I believe we will be drawn to the desert to find wisdom together. And for those of you who are like, I'm not going, I invite you to just turn somewhere locally. Where is a spirit of desert a spirit of wisdom um, right beneath your feet. Even those of you who may be in very wet green places uh, that um, is kind of inescapable. Cause it, it's quite big. So that's what I'm chewing on these days. Uh, thank you for listening. Again, I want to invite people, if you have responses or questions, we're going to be moving into the more experiential part. Uh, hopefully, you're already having an experience with us. Uh, but uh, invite you, if, if you have a little digital hand, feel free to ask a question. And in the absence of that, I'm just going to start the circle again. Uh, I'm going to remove this spotlight. Uh, Susie. Would you like to help us shift gears into something uh, experiential? So what happens is other people start talking and I lose the train of my own thought and I'm following your trains. Um, so I'll say just two two quick things. Um, <clears throat> one is that I, I think the idea of constellation being a philosophy is a very important idea. And it was a very important idea to Bert Hellinger. And it is why sometimes when you look in the books and you hear things over time, there appear to be disagreements or did he change his mind or do we change our mind? But we expand our minds and we interact with a moving life and hopefully we're moving. And constellation is so much around finding ways to move, to hold an inner compass and move in a changing world. It's the first thing. Second thing is Bert really loved poetry. I really love poetry. And listening to Dragos and then also to Leslie, I always think of Walt Whitman, who said, I contain multitudes. He was evidently a facilitator because it is uh, a, a core sense that we contain our ancestry and that Recognizing that, acknowledging that can offer a sense of companionship and care that we don't have to work for. That actually is a natural belonging. And so I write, I like to write, that's uh, um, what I do. And before I get on one of these calls, I usually write something. And I often don't read it, but today I will read what I wrote because I think I wrote it in honor of you or in response to you or honoring something I was feeling this morning. Three words in constellations. I remember we contain multitudes. I contain multitudes. I see you. I see you. So three core words in constellations. Yeah, I see a hand to the heart, thank you. Yes, I see you. 
I'm going to put on my glasses. These words are a prayer, a reconciliation, a gift, a kind and powerful message to our ancestors, to our loved ones, to ourselves, and from our ancestors, loved ones, and if we are fortunate, and ourselves. I see you welcomes the whole, doesn't ask or demand that we make ourselves small or different in order to be welcomed, in order to belong. I see you is the healing best bestowed by our ancestors. And if we're lucky, by our loved ones and in the mirror, I see you in your perfection and in your imperfection. I see you in your strength and in your vulnerability. I see you, the price you've paid and the hope you walk with. At my own pace, I have learned to look at my own reflection, to not back away, to meet myself with compassionate accompaniment in the company of compassionate others. Ancestors who say simply, keep going. We need nothing from you. And when you, Susie, Leslie, Dragos, Christy, need something more, peace, courage, sense of belonging, we are here. The first woman, the first man, the first all, whisper through thousands of generations. I am here. I see you. And when I let myself hear those whispers, I can sense in myself a great and powerful ease. At ease, I tell the world, I see you. Thank you. Thank you, Susie. We have one person asking if you're willing to share the text. <laughs> I will take it out of my notebook and type it up for sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the request. We will um, be sending a follow-up to this, of course, and uh, for all the people who weren't here and needed the recording. So um, we can include it then. That's great. Yeah. Some lovely sharings going on here, by the way. So thank you, everybody. Yeah. Ah, Dragos, do you have an experience to share with the group? Uh, I wonder if this, if there's anything else left to be said after what Susie did and said now. So. I'm still staying with the with her words and it is very powerful. I see you. Uh, we are 
You said the multitude. Yeah. I think before I, I go on, I see there's a hand raised. Maybe there are some questions. If you. Yes, I just invited Intasar. Um, apologies for pronunciation. Um, Actually, I was going to say thank you. You pronounced it so correctly, oh, Leslie. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Typically, I stay quiet, so I'm I'm really glad that I have movement towards opening and um, saying something in the spirit of belonging. Um, in your introduction, Leslie, you mentioned about wisdom being an integral part of um, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and um, I would also like to place in the circle that it's an important um, aspect in the Islamic tradition. Um, wisdom is um, in Arabic Hakim, and it's one of the um, attributes of the divine Al Hakim and the wise one. So I would like to place that in the circle as well. Thank you. Thank you. The, the names for wisdom around the world, I would love to hear them all. And that's a, a really important one. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And we have we have a few thanks for bringing Hakeem present in the ch in the chat. Um, Dragos, we turn it over to you for a bit. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Yeah. Wisdom is part of the divine, like, or divine is part of wisdom, as we all are part of the divine and as divine is part of us. And if we're looking at our mere existence, you know, the day we've been born, our journey as a child, then struggling as a young adult and then being in the adulthood, you know, going fully with our life and then going towards, you know, the fall of our life and then ending our journey uh, with closing the cycle uh, by, you know, our death is just a small part of a huge universe and it's a small part of a wisdom, this divine wisdom we are talking about, which has been passed from generation to generation to generation, in order that we could be here today, in order that we are able to manifest the divine within ourselves and share it with the rest of the world. So, I don't know about what experience to share with you, but it felt very touching what Susie has opened up and and this is a, a a space a place that is is it's expanding this is how I feel it inside of me and this is what I would like to share with you I am with you and you are with me and we are all in this together I am and you are you are and I am the divine is you the divine is me. The divine is everywhere. And probably we are one of the fortunates that we are part of this work and part of this movement. We are we are invited to bring something into this world. And I think this is how evolution is flowing down through generations, you know, sharing a little bit of us with the rest of the world. Thank you.
Thank you, Dragos. And I want the group to know that um, well, we had an outline for this gathering, but we didn't know where it was gonna go. So this is where it's going, which is lovely. And thank you for being here for making this part of where it's going. Uh, again, do invite any digital hands that want to be raised and, and, and I'm, we're all enjoying the uh, written responses as well. So um, whichever ways you like to respond. Uh, it is interesting, um, I, this wasn't planned, but over here we have um, a uh, Egyptian tree of life right over my shoulder, right over here, um, which is not directly about wisdom, but it's, it's connected to that, yeah. And the tree of life being another one of those, there's a real tree of life over there, but um, <laughs> uh, uh, the tree of life is one of those motifs that just occur across lots of different cultures. And I was just looking at some wonderful ones from Oaxaca, Mexico. Uh, it's just one of those things that keeps showing up. And so I wanna invite us into a little bit of a meditation, a little bit of a in the mind's eye constellation. So I'm gonna invite the group to take, go on a little journey with me for a moment. So the first thing to do is what you know how to do to begin to center yourself. You might like to close your eyes um, and begin to come home to yourself. It is, it's this pulse, self to world, to self, to world, to self, to world. Come back to the self for a second. You might close your eyes, as I said, notice your heart. <sighs> notice your breath. The blood going through your vessels, the electrical pulses going through your nerves and muscles. And that thing that is called chi or prana, hafesh, nafesh. the life force going through your body. And how it connects you with something larger, this tapestry that we are inevitably part of, but also we are a self with a name that is known and spoken and which says to us, I see you as in Susie's piece. Notice the voice of something larger saying to you, I see you. Even as it also says, we see us. And then in any way that is natural to you, Bring your attention to your lineages, your ancestry. Parents, two, grandparents, four, great grandparents, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. And of course, not limited to the blood ancestors, but aunts and uncles and cousins and neighbors and all the other people who've been vital to you being here now. Just notice their presence. They're always present, but we, most of the time we go through life, we don't notice them, but they are here. So just, just notice them. And whatever that's like for you, if you greet them in a friendly way, or if it makes you uncomfortable, Whatever your experience is, it, it is welcome.
And as I said before, uh, wisdom is often sought in the desert. And yet, of course, we animal humans have a natural fear of the desert too. Things are fragile in the de desert. Um, there's not a lot of resources. Things can go wrong very quickly. And so the desert can understandably be a scary place. If you can become friendly with that notion of the desert, whether literally you live in a desert like I and Christy do, or the other deserts of your lives, the aspect of your lives that feels empty or impoverished, not enough. And divine wisdom, Holy Sophia, invites us to just come a little closer to those deserts and see if there's wisdom there. And so I invite you to turn your attention to your ancestors. And you can do this either in, in an aggregate way, just all of them in some abstract way, or you might zero on into a couple of specific people, people you may know the names of, people you may not know the names of. You may just have an impression of them. They're too far back. You don't know their names. Who knew this desert? And who were touched by that divine wisdom, whether they knew it or not. And as I look at my ancestors right now, it's like I'm seeing little stars appear, little sparks. However, it shows up in your mind's eye. Notice these bits of wisdom, your ancestors, have known and choose one of them and approach it. And allow an image or a sentence, a reassurance, a question, a symbol, something to come into you, into your heart from that piece of wisdom your ancestors experienced and which is your birthright. It too was part of your first constellation in the womb. Part of what we were making sense of at the very beginning so allow this one bit of wisdom to come into you and give it an image or a symbol or a few words. What is the gift of wisdom for you today from your ancestors encounter with the divine as they navigated their deserts? the little bit of nourishment you need today. And it may feel incredibly warm and yummy, or it may be a, a little challenging. However, it's showing up for you. Take that in in any way that feels supportive or useful for you. And bookmark that in your heart and come on back.
So at this point, I invite a couple of things. Um, if you would like to put what you received into a few words in the chat, that would be really lovely to hear from some of you on the chat, from all of you, all of you, every last one, um, whoever would like to. Um, put in a few words and as you um, see the shares starting to appear in the chat, read them because other people's gifts can be gifts for us too, right? Yeah, so go ahead, start typing that in. And I'd also just like to hear a few shares, um, either from your response to Susie's words or your response to Dragos's words or your response to this little constellation you just did. And I'm gonna move my spotlight And if it'd be useful, I think at this point to hear just a few voices briefly, um, two or three or four of you, um, what are you noticing? What is your experience right now? What is your gift? What's coming through for you? And some of you are writing it in, which is lovely. Never give up, dance, um, the pain of loss, abundance, calmness. So uh, keep, keep putting those in. Leora. Hi. hi. I want to say hi to my teacher, Susie, first. Happy New Year. So good to be with all of you today. Um, thank you so much, Leslie, for that really powerful exercise. It was um, incredibly healing and just so good to connect with my ancestors. Um, and the message I got was, um, abundance is my birthright and it felt very much like trust nice thank you Leora thank you thank you very much let's hear a few more uh voices you've been hearing too much from the four of us let's hear a few few other voices thank you Leora really appreciate that again the little digital hand under reactions for those of you who are hunting for that. Yes, Inna. And if we could see you, yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Hi, I actually got my journal to write it down, but I thought I might as well share. Um, thank you so much. Um, this meditation that you just gifted us was very powerful for me personally. Like I'm still crying, but I guess uh, I'm still trying to like digest it, but what came up was the pain of loss of the sort of good nurturing masculine in my family. Um, it was interesting because my great grandmother's name was Sophia, except in Russian, it's Sophia, same thing. And so I started thinking about her and how she loved her father and how her father was so amazingly wonderful for her and her connection with her father, which I did not have, my mother did not have, and my children did not have. And so with that Sophia and thinking of her relationship with her father, I was wondering like, how did we lose what she had and what happened? And just, yeah. So I came up with the thought that I'm going to, my mother is still alive. And sometimes we talk about family stories, but I want to make a picture of like a family tree and put the names on and do a little more research on that lineage to my, maybe even past my great grandmother. Uh -huh. And just those familial relationships and I don't know, to get some kind of understanding, because when I understand things, it helps me integrate them. Yeah. yeah. So it's very deep and painful. And at the same time, there is a bit of hope now. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, Santos. Um. 
Hello, I, I just want to again say thank you for the words of uh, I see you. That was so powerful. Um, and um, during the, the meditation, I I connect, I when I was connecting with my ancestors, I realized that there was some some type of hesitation that was there that wasn't there when I was a child. I started connecting back to when I was a child and how I would connect without anybody telling me, like I would just kind of connect with like their here. And that as I got older, that sort of, there ended up being sort of a disconnect between that. And um, so I appreciate this opportunity to, to, to return back to that. And the image that came to mind was, um, was that in the more recent, like you said, I can remember the names and the faces of my grandparents and then great grandparents were sort of pictures and maybe I, and then just sort of faded. And then this, when you're talking about just the number of generations, and it just became those little dots, like you said, these little sparks and and um, the image of the of of uh, of ripples um, came to mind, and just uh, this sort of this beauty of the of the fleeting, but then just also um, being in a place where I can try to look at things and acknowledge that that there's feelings that exist that. Are beautiful but they're not necessarily they don't feel good and to acknowledge those mm. so that there is something related to the fleeting that is difficult to look at and that for so long i've tried to look at it as it's beautiful it is beautiful and it's the way it, you know but not actually touching base with like there's some other feelings going on there um thank you and, yeah so thank you for that thank you santos thank you very much yeah. Kathy. Last from the past for me. Go ahead. Yeah, there you go. Hi. Oh, it's good to see you again. <laughs> um, um, I had an odd experience. Um, I have been really looking forward to um, coming uh, to Ghost Ranch, and I keep thinking of the the red, the deep red rocks. Um, and in in my little journey that you led us through, I ended up with this piece of it. It had a quality of shale, you know, like shale that's uh, very, that splits into a lot of pieces. It was not a strong piece of rock. <laughs> um, so that's what it was. It felt like I had this fragile it's kind of um, piece of rock that could shatter. Um, and so, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes the images and symbols come to us and we can feel they're right, but we don't know exactly what they're about. Yeah, thank you, yeah. Kathy. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Um, Dragos and Susie, I'm wondering if um, either of you have something to share that's arising for you right now that you're noticing as we're moving into the last bit of our gathering. I'm waiting for Dragos, he's waiting for me. <laughs> I, I I would say that I, first of all, you know, I lived in Santa Fe for a couple of years. So there is a way in which um, this is a homecoming for me. So when you talked about the desert, one of the things that I can really uh, viscerally feel um, really is the colors. And the only other time I ever experienced this kind of spectrum of color, this particular spectrum of color, was um, in Senegal. So on the coast of Africa, I, I remember the same um, physical sense of where I was. And I grew up in New York City, so uh, I didn't always feel the physical sense of where I was. So. 
I picked that up in the desert. And the other thing, um, you know, I realize that uh, language goes very far back in my lineage and comes forward to me. And often when I write, I feel like I am actually catching words and then stacking them in a certain way. And the beauty of language, especially when we talk to ourselves, is that we can keep trying until we come up with language that actually agrees to us. And so in my interaction with the ancestor, I had this sense of coming up with language that agrees to us. And it's the first time that I ever caught those particular words. Hmm. Dragos, anything arising for you you want to share with the group? Yes, um, you, your meditation brought me back in a in a place that I have visited some time ago. I was in Uruguay, and during um, a Temascal session, I had a vision uh, with the desert and with the natives, with the Indians, and actually, I have lived my life since I was born to my death in that desert and I uh, I grew up, I was taught how to do things, you know. And it was interesting at the end of the journey, it was me, the young adult, looking at me, the old wise man preparing to die. And the words that came to me were that this is the place where we live fully in the desert of love. So, thank you. Uh, that was part of uh, the journey, and it really brought me back with your uh, meditation to that place. Thank you. That makes me think of Susie's. How did you put it? Um, the right words you did that's not what you said um what 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 was the last thing you said the right words in our hearts i you know people take notes for me because i never remember what i just said <laughs> <laughs> i think i said something about i think i said something about it, you know eventually reshaping and finding the words that agree to us the words that agree to us yes and I feel like that matches very well this desert image that Tra Tragos just offered. Yeah, lovely. Um, I do see your hand, Inna. Uh, I want to share just a little bit of stuff and we'll see if we can get to your hand again. Um, but there's a little bit I want to share here with the group. Um, uh, give me a second. I got to do a little bit of uh, reorganizing here on the screen. So um, I just want to share with everyone, um, hopefully you can all see this. Um, Susie or Dragos, please let me know if um, the website is not showing, because that's what I intend for people to see. Um, this is the website for the Western Constellations Intensive coming up very, very, very soon. It's coming up like tomorrow. It's in March. Um, and again, the theme opening a doorway, old wisdom for the new day. That's a picture um, from, from our local uh, area in the town of Abiquiu, New Mexico. Um, and please note, uh, for those of you who are moved as a result of this meeting or watching the recording uh, to consider this, you can save up to $300 through January 12th, which in my calendar is Thursday. Um, it's gonna go up $100 uh, starting the next day. So we really wanna encourage you to, if you're thinking about it, this is the time to dive in. Um, and then 
if Zoom will let me do this, I want to just show this. There we go. And again, Susie or Dragush, let me know if the screen did not just change. Sometimes Zoom can be a little tricky in this regard. Um, this is the page from the website um, that describes our venue, Ghost Ranch. It's an historic place in New Mexico. Um, obviously, Native Americans have lived here for uh, nearly 15,000 years. Um, uh, more recently, um, the Spanish did make it up that way um, when they came through. Um, that was kind of the edge of how far they got. Uh, and then um, cattle rustlers and all kinds of no good cowboy dudes out here. And, um, and then later, uh, a lot of American artists, including George O'Keefe made their home here. So it's, it's a pretty important uh, place. And when I told my local constellation friends that we were gonna be having this event here, they lost their minds. They were so happy about it. Uh, I'm actually pretty new to Ghost Ranch, but you get a feel for the location here. So we warmly invite you to consider coming for this really uh, rich five days uh, constellation deep dive. Uh, someone did ask about whether it was online. It is not online. There are times when we consider making an online uh, uh, aspect to this, that's kind of a tricky thing to do um, because a big part of what this is about is the residential experience, eating together, running into each other in the hallways or out on the lawn, uh, uh, sleeping next to the spaces where we're doing constellations. The nice thing about Ghost Ranch is that it does have a wide variety of lodging options um, some of them extremely affordable by the standards of these kinds of places. Um, and uh, yummy food, all of that stuff. Um, we gather a few different ways together. We meet as a large group like we're doing right here and do this kind of stuff together. Um, we also meet in the workshops that the faculty described to you. But the, for those of you who've ever done another intensive somewhere else, you know this model in which you gather with peers in smaller groups throughout the entire gathering, come back on a regular basis, and you get to work with all the faculty um, with a group of peers. It's really quite lovely. And it makes for a really deep experience that um, doesn't just hit one note. We, we gather in light in small ways and uh, heavy in big ways, and we laugh together and we eat together and we eat too much chocolate together. Um, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and so I want to invite right now, if you have any concrete questions about the upcoming this event, or um, this, you could also at this time uh, uh, ask any questions of the faculty about anything that we've done here. Again, I want to keep speaking to the people who already know, yeah, I'm not going to the intensive. That's not happening. Uh, if you uh, still have questions uh, for our faculty here, I um, also want to invite anyone who's ever been to one of these before who wants to say why they're coming back or why they loved it. I see Susie just unmuted. Um, any, any shares or questions now? Um, Susie, I saw you unmute. I actually, it wasn't about the intensive, it just was a question about the airport. And I wanted to say the airport, Albuquerque is the prime, is the best airport not to be confused with Albuquerque, oh, no. Albuquerque, not Albuquerque. Yes, and anyone who has uh, really practical questions like that, Christy's going to be um, hugely available and helpful um, with people around the, those questions. Thank you, Susie. Um, having said that, Susie, before you go. Yes. Um, what has been special to you about the intensives in the past? Uh, <clears throat> Well, personally, first of all, they sort of moved me out of the, uh, I learned so much from the other faculty and that's such a gorgeous experience for somebody who has been doing this a long time and I can become sort of bubbleized in my own teaching in a certain way. Um, the other aspect which is extraordinary to me is to connect with, um, with 
you know, students who really are teachers, um, both literally and more metaphorically. And I have come to enjoy what is clearly learned behind my back. Um, you know, the, the conversations in the hallways and the small group meetings at dinner, and I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear how smart and collaborative and kind people are. And um, I think that's an extraordinary, um, that's an extraordinary thing about the container that's established. It has very little to do with anything I say or do. It happens organically. And um, um, I think it's unusual. I think it's really unusual. Thank you, Susie, which, which reminds me, and I see your hand, hand there. Um, uh, uh, that people leave with colleagues and friends for life. There's an extraordinary kind of collegial sharing that can happen regardless of where you're at with constellations. Um, uh, it is in a sense, a meeting of colleagues as well as a meeting of students. Uh, uh, and participants and learners and people seeking healing, but who also contribute to the healing uh, container. Uh, and that's quite a lovely thing. Um, yes, thank you, Riham. So sorry about that. We will be doing more things online. Um, uh, Jan, I see your hand. Thank you, Leslie. It's very sweet of you three to, to give us this rich time. I just wanted to say for the first two years, I had enrolled to go to the intensive and the pandemic hit. So the first couple of years was done online and you guys did an amazing job considering that my first time to come in person was last June in San Rafael. And Leslie, what you said about that special joining in person and with the land in particular, really had great meaning. I mean, we wound up organically doing a constellation that involved the land and indigenous people and people that were in our group, which was amazing, rich, and it, it just happened on its own. And I just, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it. I'm so excited that it's happening at Ghost Ranch. Um, this was a place my mother came again and again to paint, and she, um, her paintings reflect this amazing place. And it's not far from my wife, Karen's mother. So we will be this. So it's kind of our mothers are gonna be here with us in the constellation. We're kind of excited about that because Karen's mom is 96 getting up there and a time to visit her as well. So I'm, I'm so excited. I'm thrilled beyond words. I appreciate um, all of uh, our teachers here. I know the richness of what comes from one of these intensives. And I guess I was just excited and wanted to share that, Leslie. Thanks so much. This is an awesome testimonial. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Other questions or shares from the group? Again, um, in response to um, what you've experienced today um, or specifically in response to this event, we're inviting you to consider. Yes, Lisa. I move to share by this beautiful group. Thank you so much, Leslie and Susie and Drados. Different pieces of what each of you has said and the others have said and written has just uh, touched me in such a wonderful way. Um, and what came to me in the uh, meditation was a poem that my grandmother wrote for me when I was a child. And lately I've been wearing her ring, her green ray of whatever that means. Um, and so it's a short poem, but I would love to share it. Um, um, so here it is. Her eyes begged me to sit with her, to play gin rummy or go fish. 
I couldn't very well refuse so palpable a wish. She was so very proud because her older brother taught her. I shuffled, dealt, turned up a card, decorous, oh, for charming small granddaughter. Decorously, we were equal. I learned the cards from 10, she purred, except I haven't learned the people. And so in coming back to New Mexico, where I did go to college in the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, um, and my college roommate, Alexis McNaughton, is your friend, Leslie, uh, and she told me about this. It feels like a homecoming, which is something that Susie said. Um, and then the other piece about that is I, I felt a little conflicted because I am signed up, but there's so much that happened to me in college in New Mexico, you know, the boyfriend and the whole thing and the desert and the whatever. But Dragos, thank you very much for saying, and I wrote it down in the chat, living a full life in the desert of love. And that is what I'm coming to the intensive to experience with my grandmother behind me. So thank you so much. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. And I, I wanna bring us to a close by um, the danger of an event like this where we're clearly promoting a particular event is that the people who do not plan to come to the event, um, you know, we end up with a funny sort of uh, situation. And so I wanna invite us to come back together. Yeah. Right now, all together here joined by our ancestors. That that desert of love is a specific place in Northern New Mexico or Senegal or Uruguay or Egypt, the other places represented here today. And it's also everywhere. I am glad some people are left hungry. You will reach for more. The various constellations and other resources yeah, that are um, growing so much these days. Yeah. And I invite you to reach out to us and ask if, 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 if the intensive is, is not for you, See if we have another idea for you for how you can participate in this work. Yeah, we might know of something that may be even better than the Western Intensa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thank you all for being here today. Um, I invite you to connect with the blessings of your ancestors and the blessings of Divine Holy so Sophia. And uh, we send you on your day. Thank you for being here. Feel free to unmute and do a messy goodbye. Thank you, Leslie. I can't wait to see you soon. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you, so Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. We will say goodbye to the rest of you. And uh, Susie and Dragos and I are gonna chat for a second. We'll see some of you soon. Bye, Jen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There you go. You bye bye. Turn the recording. Thank you. <laughs>